Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Chicken Police, painted red. We're at the weekend house. We have a murder on our hands. We've solved a safe puzzle. And we're struggling to know what to do next. I did look it up, and I think what's happened is that I've done something out of the preferred order, and I think something that was meant to trigger hasn't. We're meant to get a new location after we've done the safe and the phone. So I'm going to ring the police again, and I'm going to see if that will, uh, will shake it loose. Interesting. Yeah, because in the walkthrough, it just says, do the safe, call the police, go to the next location. I don't have that next location still. It's supposed to be a newsstand somewhere. So I'm... I'm struggling a little bit. I mean, I've tried doing this one again. Just in case. Okay, well, it's open. Let's open that again. Um. <sighs> Well, that's annoying. Um, I guess I'm going to pause then and just try doing a few things and see if it unlocks this location we're meant to have by now. I think I figured it out. There's one thing I didn't spot, and it's this. Most of the other scenes, when you zoom in on something, there's only one thing to interact with, um, and there isn't the button to kind of just highlight hotspots, but it's Anything this. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. Sorry to the game and for, you know, implying that perhaps it was a bug for doing things out of sequence. I, th I think this is, uh, I think this is what we needed so to do. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. Uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer. Right, so now we have that new location. Uh, it's apparently it's a newsstand, or maybe we go to the hotel first? Oh no, Mullins newsstand, let's go here. Excellent, we've moved things along. Should we say hi to the old beaver? <laughs> Pardon me. Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. Dead Silent Night, Meredith H. Marble. Maybe there's collectibles and stuff. That's the first one we've seen, though. Murdoch and Falcon is a famous law firm in Clawville, run by a blind bat and a bird-brained falcon. Mullen's car, ancient but kind of beautiful, like the old <laughs> beaver himself. <laughs> Good way of describing him. Piggy Diggy Lottery, do you feel as lucky as this fella? Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Raymond Chandler. Magnificent animals. I think there's going to be a lot of Easter eggs in this game. And in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop. Just a shadow of its former self. Like so many things in this city. Like me. Hmm. 
The taxi company for the upper class only, politicians and gangsters. We're getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Like an ancient god or something, or the personification of the city. What a lovely thought. But if the city took shape, it would most likely be some kind of vermin. <laughs> yeah, true. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct, coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know, Marty. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. Hey, Hercule. What's up, old friend? Hello, me lads. It's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat go by? <laughs> we're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. <laughs> what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me sons, so you are. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. He's asking about some stuff. Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure. But he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way. And that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Ibn's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my cold dead carcass. Oh, well, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So, he usually listens to reason. Yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? What if you people have mentioned the change in character? I want there might be something going on uh, with him, with the rat. Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. <laughs> Good one again. Hey, Martin, my lad, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? Ah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with you, son. Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This is priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. Um, Monica, that's the secretary, isn't it? The police station. Nice girl. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them and makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. We'll ask about him last. Do you know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? 
That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a gal such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can, and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville, but from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery, and that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, silly boy. And one more thing. What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just <clears throat> take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. I know, Martin. I know. All right, let's ask about him, then. How's Desire? What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't met me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. <laughs> you see, you're right about that, sonny boy. And, uh, the cubs? Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, Sonny. Oh, cool. okay. Well, I think we're done here, then. Um, got a bit more info. That's good. So... We should probably head to... Hmm. Let's go back to the club. Maybe we can speak to Natasha so again. So what are we doing here again, Sonny? I don't know. Maybe we could question Natasha. Do you think she's here? Who knows, Marty? We'll see. There's Filmar. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, maybe he's not drunk as a skunk. Stop projecting onto others, old chicken. Ah, uh, shut the clock up, Marty. <laughs> no, I'm sorry I hurt your precious feelings, boss bird. So, uh, let's a quick look at the hotspots here. If there's anything different to last time, apart from Philmar here. Doesn't look like it. Hey, old bird. What are you waiting for out here in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little uh, tired. Yeah, tired. I can see that, pal. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight. It's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There ain't nothing funny about it, Snowflake. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry. Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since we left? Ibn? Uh, he got put off a long time ago. Natasha? I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could it be that I didn't come here by car? <laughs> what do you think, Sonny? Old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but uh, you take care, all right? Ah, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, so we can't ask him specific questions. Uh, could just try going in. Yeah, okay. Olivia's not here. Oh, then there she is. Okay, well, let's talk to Olivia then. So we meet again. How unpleasant. I'm sorry, Olivia. We won't keep you long. Perhaps you could tell us if you've seen Natasha. 
She hired you and you already lost sight of her? That's unfortunate. We should have met her, but she didn't show up. Should we be worried? Are you asking me that? I haven't seen her since she was on stage. Not like I was paying any attention to her or anything. Thanks, sweetheart. We won't bother you anymore. Thanks, Olivia. Don't mention it. Hello Maybe again, something? Bojack. Bojack. Please don't call me that, sir. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, what's your name again? Oh, if you really must know, I'm Lance, sir. Okay, Lance. Listen, it's very important. Oh, please, sir. Don't get me involved in anything. I just want to get my shift over with and go home to sleep. Relax. There won't be a problem. Just answer the questions honestly. Oh, if I must, let's give it a try. <clears throat> right, kid. Lance. Huh, Lance. Yeah. So, have you seen Natasha since her performance? No, oh, no. Don't ask me anything about Miss Kitsenko and Mr. Westler. It could cost me my job or even more. Hey, it's a matter of national security. It could be. <laughs> yeah, see, it could be. So, if you help, you won't only be helping us, but the Crown and the whole city of Clawville. Oh, okay, all right, just stop that chicken shit, will ya? I saw Natasha, yeah. She came down, spoke with someone, then stormed out the front door. And then what happened? She came right back in, two or three minutes later, soaked to the bone. She was in a hurry. She went up to her suite, then came back down and left. And you haven't seen her since? I genuinely haven't seen her ever since, sir. Thanks, Lance. You've been a great help. I'm happy to hear that. So Natasha had left? Seems so. But she never arrived at the weekend house. Then? Then we'll stay with the original plan. We'll gather our thoughts at the office and go over everything we know. Okay, Boss Bird. Lead the way. Let's do it. We had no choice but to continue the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold, and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course. Figure out what's next. Let's take a look at what Oops. we've learned so far. Yeah, that click is still very... Uh, I might even put it on autoplay, just because it's very sensitive, the click, and sometimes skips. Is it just going to take too long? Maybe it takes too long. So, how did this whole case start? Investigate. Okay, we haven't done this before. Um... Not sure what the naught out of three uh, relates to. We've got possible suspects, we've got clues and items. Okay. Uh, how did this whole case start? Strange threats. And Natasha. Yeah. That's it. Okay. What do I do? Oh. Natasha and the threats, but what's the connection? They were clearly addressed to her. Yeah, the threats are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. Items. So 
so gotta be an item. It's okay, it's gotta be an item. Okay, so it's not my gun. It's the card. And then she well, she called us in, so is that it? Okay, not that then. Related to the list. There was something Natasha didn't speak about. Kept it secret. Natasha is terrified. And she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. And a person. Uh, it's probably gotta be Ibn, hasn't it? Maybe Deborah, because she got killed. Olivia? So what could we what? do with this list? Oh, okay. Um, he might know something about it. I know only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. Okay, that was cool. So, the card is uh, uh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Filmar gave us... Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar! Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. <laughs> that could be a running joke. He literally can't remember his name. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart. 555-932. Five, 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 I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, boss bird. Yeah, I'm just going to check the hotspots. Anything different? Should we turn the light switch on this time? There we go. <laughs> so it's five, 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 nine, three, two. Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you again. Uh, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? With the chicken police? Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. One? <laughs> Just a moment, second. Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't m m mention it. Besides, it was my big dream, dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, well, these names. I know ha half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But, but I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper class. Politicians, business people. Oh, my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it means. So, is it a dead end? I'm af afraid so. Okay, before we do that, I want to check this card out that we found. I didn't actually look at it. SN. Could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities. But we must find out where it's from. Okay. Uh, well, let's ask Lewis what we can ask him. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes. She's a very lovely young lady. Where did you take her after you two left? Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? <clears throat> Rochester Street 37? Y yes, exactly. Why? Luck. <gasps> did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. This? This? Oh, my goodness. 
I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. That's the bingo. You s s s see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s s sweltering Nile. Mm. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel, but it's not, not like that. It's something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you so much. It is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis, how do we get in? You want to get in? Well, if you could show them this card, they'll surely let you in, but it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. <laughs> so, are we going to a luxury brothel? Correct, Marty. Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. Yeah, let's finish asking him about this stuff. This stuff. I don't know what you s s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately van van disappeared. <laughs> really? That's suspicious. Or he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. I didn't see. S s s s I didn't s see her after the sh show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows, she was a d d d dancer, then a backing singer, then st d star, and then club owner. We found out as much already. Do you think she'd fled the Stavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead g g giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. So it's possible that she is a part of the royal family? I d d d don't think so. Nobody could have survived that hor hor awful night. Mm, you're probably right. What should we know about the place, Lewis? Besides what they're, uh, dealing in there. No, oh, it's an elegant and d d d exclusive place. Not everybody visits them for, for, for that, you know. Some animals just go for c c company. I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say, that it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? The Nile is a proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes. But stronghold? <clears throat> I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't worry for the girls, S -s -s Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The S -s -s separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. <laughs> uh, that was a little bit, um, equivocal. <laughs> okay, so that's Lewis. Um, looks like we've got another location to go to then. So that's... Oh, okay, yeah, we can't go anywhere else, so we'll, we'll head over to the Sweltering Nile. Chapter 2, The Killing. To Marty's delight. We were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place, just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. Well, here we are. The kingdom of long legs, silky skin, and fluttering lashes. We've arrived. Calm down, Marty. Watch your blood pressure. Okay, let's have a quick look what we got here. Bird fella. Octane. 
Okay, so we can talk to the foxy lady and the receptionist, it looks like. So let's go and just have a look at the other stuff. These brides are elegant. Just like Laszlo said. Laszlo. Lewis. What do you think could be the old rabbit's type? Fluffy tails? Furry ears? A raspy tongue? Oh, for the love of all the gods, stop it. But just think about it. Please shut up, Marty. <laughs> oh my god. That woman, she's familiar. Do you think it's her? The broad from the Bloody New Year's? God damn it, Marty, do you have to say it out loud? It gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps more like. Anyway, I don't know if it's really her. I always get confused by the exotic ones, but yeah, maybe. Honestly, it gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. She's what I call an exotic beauty. Well, that's one way to put it. Hey, every animal's the most beautiful thing in the world to someone. Yeah, you're right. Oof, I don't know about you, but I go weak in the knees for stripes. Please, Marty, I don't want to know. And I don't care. Keep it to yourself. And let's get out of here quickly. Can't I even talk to you anymore? You can. Ask about the weather, or how's my lower back. Those two are even connected, if you want to know. Yeah, old fart. Yee, that guy's stare gives me the creeps. Eh, uh, I can see why. I've always told myself that birds are weird. What did you just say? Huh? What? Me? Nothing. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk to Foxy Lady. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? <laughs> what am I, your mother? Do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Clucking lords. Really? What's the... Was that, what was the deal with oh, that? I'm sorry. Can I try again? If you'd really like to. I will be, ma'am. Uh. Like that? <laughs> oh, thank you, honey. Marty, ma'am. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. Yeah, I don't think we can do anything else there for now, so let's talk to the receptionist then. I think she must be the receptionist. Bravo, Mr. Detective. Why do you have to be like that all the time? Well, sometimes I seriously can't decide if you've become totally stupid over the years or it just entertains you to act that way. Well, you know, that's a good question. That's exactly what I mean. My name is Day Night Diamond. Welcome to the Sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Marty, not now. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. You hear that, Sonny? Any questions? Shut up, Marty. 
Alright, so let's uh, interview her about specific things. Uh, we'll start off by mentioning we're from the police, I guess. I wouldn't want to offend you. Far from it, but it's evident you're from the police, even without this. <laughs> Is it that obvious? No, it isn't, but, you know, here in the Nile, we have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Right. I understand, ma'am. Right, what about Lewis? Do you know a gentleman named Lewis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. I see. Uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. House policy. We have that, too. It's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, please... Come back with a warrant. Ah, uh, touche. Have you been working here long, miss? Almost five years, sir. And do you like your job? Very much so. I think it's only worth doing anything if you honestly enjoy it. You hear that, Sonny? You should take that advice. I'm on it, Marty. I'm trying to get myself fired if you haven't noticed. Yeah, and me too. <laughs> Collateral damage. <laughs> All right, what about the list of names? Does this list mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. All right, what about the strange Look, card, then? she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we, uh asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be right back. Uh, thank you. I'm much obliged. Uh... So we talk to talk to her again. May I invite you gentlemen for a drink, perhaps? No, thank you. We're in a hurry. Oh. Alright. Um, and I can't really talk to these ones. Oh my god. Okay, let's not let's not dwell on those too long. Um all right. let's put looking here. Still some people we haven't met. We're doing pretty well. That bloody New Year's Eve they mentioned. Um, the night that changed Sonny and Marty's lives forever. <clears throat> it started with a strange call and an unexpected visit from a tigress, and ended in a hatching house where the duo had to witness an unprecedented massacre. Sonny became personally involved in the case when a strange figure in a top hat targeted his family but escaped before he could have been apprehended. In truth, the case was never officially closed, but under the pressure of the Attorney General, the papers had reported as the glorious triumph of the chicken police. This is where the legend originates from, started by an unfortunate lie. Oh, it shows our questioning success there. Our questionable success, I should say. Um, all right, I mean, I apologize for the wait. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful? My mistress, Madame Zavas, would like to meet you. You mean that, Madame Zavas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. Madame Zavas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist, former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. 
Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector III didn't grace me with his presence. All right. Hey, let's have a quick look at the hotspots. Uh, okay, that's a picture of when I was younger days. I'm not going to click on that. <laughs> I think we can get the idea. But we'll have a have a look at Interesting this. pieces. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nylonites. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah, interesting. Thank you. Uh, okay. Is that the time already? Have you noticed your clock's not working? How observant you are. That clock isn't meant to show the time. It's a decoration. A memento. It's beautiful. Indeed. Hey, we're probably going to get some puns here, so what have we got? Owls don't blink. Slime and punishment. Seven pieces of my mind. What is, what's his observations on these? There are books here on quite a variety of topics. There are books here. Okay, so same for each one. Death of the Horse. Uh, 49 Years of the Reptile. Uh, one Key to the Animal Mind. All right. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's have a good look at Madame Zavas. So she is the legendary Madame Zavas. Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. Uh, thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything. But, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless, but now it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. I swim well, too. Okay, so we can ask her specific questions. Uh, let's start off... That will just work down. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. You would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life itself. That was beautiful, ma'am. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? 
It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted. Protective. Quick-tempered. Fierce. Yes. Fierce. Thank you. Very useful. So we can do an interrogation, but let's just ask this last question this first. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? How? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. Unity. Love. Freedom. Interbreeding? That too, yes. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? I'm glad to hear it. Okay, all right, let's try the uh, interrogation. Then. Deceit is everything to save us. She used to be a spy, so I'm going to take her every word with a grain of salt. She's deceptive. Okay, and we're starting off on a bad foot here. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavos? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. So deceptive. This one? Isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? You know, Mr. Featherland, those that are genuinely dedicated never care about danger. That's something you must know even better than I. Do you think it's my loyalty that motivates me the most? If you do, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Maybe you're not loyal to the police, Mr. Featherland, but you are to your own principles and ideals. Am I right? That's true, but you're avoiding the question. Why did you stay in the King's employment after the scandals that are making half the city riot? What makes you still believe so much in the institution of monarchy? You know, I always adapt, but only to a degree where I still don't have to give up myself and my ideals for the sake of survival. You'd rather die then? Maybe it would seem too dramatic or even romantic to you, but yes, exactly. I'm sorry to doubt you, but I've always thought your kind was rather compromised. Do you mean spies or crocodiles? Spies, of course. <laughs> I must disappoint you. But there aren't many groups as loyal and unwavering as the spies, Mr. Featherland. If you're telling me, ma'am, I believe you. Oh dear, that was a bad one. Um, <clears throat> so I don't... That's one thing, I mean, I'm enjoying the game, but I don't really get this section. I mean, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't get quite how I'm supposed to make the choices. I always seem to pick the wrong ones, but I'm, it doesn't seem... To me, anyway, it doesn't seem obvious which is the right one to ask. Um... All right, maybe we should be more direct. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. 
I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. See, that was the right one. Okay, so maybe that... Okay. If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but if you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Save Us is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Mm. Um, maybe this one. Everyone in the city thinks you're dangerous. Why is that? There are many legends in the city about many things, Mr. Featherland. I, for one, have heard that you too had solved all your cases. Is that true? You know it's not. Uh, I hear things. The truth comes out when we come face to face with it. So? There's one case we never solved, though the press said otherwise, thanks to political pressure. Fascinating. And you see how much easier it is now that you've said it. You managed to dodge my question again. You're very good at that. My answer is maybe. Maybe I am dangerous. But only if someone stands between me and my goals. Which are? Uh, I'm an old woman now, Mr. Featherland. I care for nothing except the well-being of my girls. Excuse me, but I can't believe that. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Proud of being a survivor. You're gonna trust me if I play this part of her. You're capable of anything to keep your secrets hidden. Am I right? 
Do you mean like sending obscene threats to Natasha to remind her of her sordid past? So you know about the threats? Of course I do. Who do you think Natasha came to for help first? You, perhaps? Please, don't make me laugh. If you want to know, I wasn't even her second choice. Even Mr. Philmar Lowe entered the picture earlier than me. Should I tell you I'm sorry to hear that? Don't bother. Oh, man, that was a big mess. Uh, yeah, I, 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 this, it's not really working for me, this system. I mean, maybe it's just me. But I don't know. <laughs> Do you know where Natasha came from? Before Natural. That's all you Oops. know about her. Sorry. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to the Stavonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland, yes, curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Yeah, we got it back a bit with that one. <clears throat> Protective, dedicated her whole life to her. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up. Um, it's a risk, but I'm going to go with the top one. I mean, that torn between those two. Go with Why this. did you let her leave with Wessler? What else could I have done? Wessler is a handsome, rich, powerful animal, and Natasha fell in love with him. If anything, I know you can't stand in the way of a woman in love. There's nothing more dangerous, Mr. Featherland. I've been in this job for more than 20 years, but I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> you see, you learn something new every day if you have an open mind. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm not doing very well. Um, you can actually get an achievement for fail, sort of um, having a really low score on the detective meter, but not but still succeeding the interview. It's called um, uh, the Frank Drebin achievement. Uh, Frank Drebin being uh, Leslie Nielsen's character in the Naked Gun movies. Uh... When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball attended by Ibn Wessler his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself, yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant, she was in love. Yes, in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. Okay, so we got something back there. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly, I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do, because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. 
Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended, and alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Any time, detective. Yes. Any time. So what do we think? I reckon I'm on about two stars for this one. Yeah, it's better than I thought it would be. Still, we got it done. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Cool. And we will do that, but we'll pick that up next time. So I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching this episode of Chicken Police Painted Red. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a pretty interesting one. We're sort of getting uh, getting into the thick of it now, I think. And um, things are starting to, to make a little bit of sense in a very, very vague way. Um, but yeah, interested to hear your theories anyway as to what's going on. So, you know, feel free to put those in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, as I hope that you did, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be fantastic. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed, it would be amazing if you could do so. So thanks very much once again, and I hope to see you next time for more Chicken Police. Bye for now.